Excellent. Let's talk about Metasploit Framework. The big news, Metasploit 5.0 has been released. That's huge. Um, it's the first release, first major release in a number of years. Um, it contains some cool stuff, you know, related to automation, evasion, and a lot more. Uh, you know, big congrats to the team for all their work to make this milestone possible. Uh, Brent broke the blog. <laughs> yeah, his, his post was really popular, announcing the release. Um, we'll put a, a link alongside uh, this video recording to it. Um, users can uh, try Metasploit 5 by cloning the framework uh, from the GitHub repo or using one of the nightly build packages. Uh, the binary installers, which include our commercial Metasploit, uh, will be updated over the coming month or two. And distributions like Kali and Parrot that include Metasploit are going to be moving over to Metasploit 5 as well, uh, work in progress. Uh, we also have an initial set of release notes available up on the framework GitHub, uh, courtesy of uh, our docs expert, Gail. Thank you, Gail. Uh, and we'll put a link to them alongside the video recording as well. So super awesome, very exciting. Well, let's talk about modules. Um, we've had some new modules land uh, since our last meeting, um, including some, you know, everybody likes good remote code execution modules. Uh, targeting some of the following, uh, Erlang port mapper uh, daemon. Uh, we have a module that comes from community member wet work, uh, which is a module attempts to authenticate uh, with the user provided cookie to run commands on a remote Erlang server. Uh, this might be interesting for folks targeting RabbitMQ and other applications or services uh, that use Erlang. And I think we have a demo of that today. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, we also had uh, two modules uh, come in uh, for console, which is HashiCorp's distributed mesh service uh, used for connecting, securing, and configuring services. Uh, they, uh, from these, these came in from community member Q Kaiser, um, and they target uh, one targets the R exec uh, feature of console, and another targets the console services API. Uh, and I think we have a demo of one or those today as well. The services one, awesome, cool, very cool. Uh, additionally, we had uh, you all remember the, uh, the cold, Adobe's Cold Fusion uh, web development application. Uh, we had a community member uh, Quasar. Uh, I think uh, gave us a, a submitted a module uh, that exploits an unauthenticated file upload in the CK editor, uh, which leads to JSP execution on the target. So that's kind of cool. And we've also got uh, a remote code execution for Mail Cleaner, uh, the community edition. Uh, this module came in from uh, Mehmet. Uh, the module exploits an authenticated command injection vulnerability in the Mail Cleaner application. Mail Cleaner itself is an email filtering program that tries to you know, catch slash identify spam phishing, scan attachments for viruses, et cetera. Um, so that kind of rounds out the remote code execution modules. Uh, we also have some post and aux modules uh, that have landed as well, uh, including a scanner for Java JMX MBean servers uh, that will uh, locate servers that tell you if they require authentication or not, and that comes from community member S. Corbati. Uh, we have a Windows payload persistence uh, module uh, that persists uh, a payload on a Windows target um, as using the Windows services model. Uh, and that comes from Green M. One of the neat things about that is it actually um, builds dynamic C code every time it builds a service. So every time you run the module, you actually get a different, unique service binary. Oh, very it, cool. It actually uses the evasion framework that was in Metasploit 5. So um, that's also another thing that came out with Metasploit 5 is now you have this automatic, automatic dynamic um, service artifact generation within um, persistence. Yeah, which is uh, another reason to go check out Metasploit 5. <laughs> very cool. Uh, we also have a, a Chrome cookies gatherer uh, that came from community member default name here. Uh, it's a GitHub username, uh, which will uh, uses Chrome's remote debugging feature to gather def the default users' uh, cookies. Um, and another interesting module is actually a denial of service module um, from community member J. Diogo, uh, which, uh, worked up, which came in uh, along, along with two collaborators who worked on this module. Uh, which allows a remote un unauthenticated attacker to send a single uh, intentionally crafted uh, programmable controller communications commands uh, packet to vulnerable devices that use uh, this, this protocol called the Allen Bradley Legacy Protocol. It looks like programmable logic controller type devices. That's pretty interesting. Uh, additionally, uh, we've had a number of improvements to the uh, framework. 
Um, uh, one to note is you can now create Windows reverse HTTP, HTTPS payload stagers uh, with a specific user agent value. Uh, when you use the, these, these new stagers, uh, they'll, they'll send that user agent value when they make their initial get request back to the framework instance, uh, courtesy of our own Buster B. Yeah, that's really useful for being able to um, spoof particular user agent. Otherwise, it uses the, the, the default like Windows, you know, um, HTTP client agent, which uh, tends to look weird because not much else uses that. So it allows us to not stick out quite so much inside of a network environment. Blend in a little better, yeah. Very cool. Uh, we also Windows Interpreter is also had an improvement where it can now read uh, multi-string registry entries from the Windows registry, uh, courtesy of GreenM. Um, and more, uh, numerous module cleanups, tweaks, and checks added from folks like Bcoles, WVU, and Hoodie. Um, and as always, a huge big thanks to everyone who helps contribute to the Metasploit project. It's really cool. And with that, we've got a few demos. Uh, I'll start with the Erlang port mapper demo. Um, so for the demo, I have a RabbitMQ server set up on this Windows machine. Uh, it uses the Erlang uh, port mapper, so that's running. Um, for the module, it does assume you have a cookie, so either like an info leak or a config leak or something, you could get a cookie or potentially. Um, so it's actually for the RabbitMQ, uh, the user's folder. Um, there we go right there. I already have it set. Uh, one thing to note, there is multiple targets here, so Unix, uh, Linux command stager, Windows, Windows command stager. Um, so it's, it was like that because when I was originally submitted, uh, there's kind of a limitation on the payload. So if I do set target zero, we'll see that it automatically sets a payload here and kind of the same thing with uh, set target, I think two would be the, that should be good. Um, set target, let's see that one. So for Windows add user, uh, there's a limitation on the size, um, and those were kind of the only ones we were able to get working. Later on, we improved it. Uh, one of the pen testers that worked here was basically saying, I want a shell on Windows. So <laughs> uh, I, I went back to look at this and added the command stager later. But I won't be demoing that one because it takes like five minutes to run. So, there's a line length limit when executing the command stager, so it has to send like a little bit at a time. It takes forever. Uh, but for this one, I'll be demoing the add user. So um, I just like using this password. I don't think I had to change it. <laughs> so anyways, before I run that, let me net user. Not sure how to end big in on Windows, but oh, there we go. OK. Yeah, so no Metasploit mm -hmm. user. Uh, but exploit, go back. Net user, so the Metasploit user uh, exists there. So, yeah, if you actually want to run the, the full exploit, get a show it. It's slow. <laughs> 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 so, I kind of uh, leave it at that. Any questions? No, I, I, w w would it make sense to like add the user, run, then run PS exec, and then switch back and <laughs> <every user>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's definitely a way to use it. Just add a user so you could at least get onto the system yeah. uh, another way. Yeah. So how typical, I mean, obviously here in RabbitMQ, you need to info leak and get the cookie. Are there app, uh, common Erlang applications that have more or less a static cookie, or um, is there hygiene people should follow to make sure that their cookie is protected? Uh, I don't think there's a default like static cookie, but mm -hmm. there was the article that's mentioned um, here does mention uh, by default the cookie is 20 capital characters yep. um, when it's originally generated. So a potential brute forcer you could create for that. Um, but I don't think there's a, like a default standard one. Yeah. Um, older distributions of RabbitMQ for Windows uh, used a static one so that you could just hook them all right up together. Um, and that'd be a thing to check for. Um, 
And the way, the best practice to avoid uh, being vulnerable to this is to not have uh, your port mapper, which handles connection of Erlang nodes to each other, available to the internet or uh, to anything that's not supposed to be an Erlang node. Okay. Yeah, well said. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Jacob. All right. Shelby, a demo of the, uh, the console services API. Awesome. Sorry, setting my information for this, but um, basically, uh, console agent, um, its services API has a feature which basically allows you to uh, set custom scripts or commands to check like health statuses of other nodes connected to the web services uh, feature. And so basically here's what I have. I have this here. Um, so I have the R port for the web services right here. Uh, and then the IP and let's go ahead and run this. And so basically it just runs a uh, payload and it should connect. So it actually, it, um, the, whenever you run this command, uh, it actually like, uh, I guess, sets up an actual job to run on some kind of configured interval and you run that and you can get a shell that way. Um, but console doesn't have this, uh, I guess, this option enabled by default anymore. It once was, I think, prior to versions 0 0.8, but now it's uh, disabled, but yeah. So unless the uh, user had gone in and exp expressly enabled it on ver later versions after that, you, yep. you might have more luck with the earlier versions where it was yep. automatically enabled. That is correct. One of the kind of fun fun things about upgrades, you know, when people don't rebuild systems from scratch, is a lot of times they start with the default setting from the old version, and then it carries over to the newer versions. I, I think I've seen issues like that, and say when you upgrade like Windows 2003 server yeah, to 2012, point. eventually it keeps all the old backwards compatibility stuff on that wouldn't have been on if you just started with the newer version. So That's right, yeah. It'd be interesting to see if upgrading console from 0 0.8 to a newer version still leaves this setting on by default. So. Awesome. Yeah, any questions for Shelby? Going once. So the, the same kind of hygiene applies here. Don't expose it to the internet. Basically, yes. Um, so in, you can actually have ACL tokens, um, but if no one has that, then of course, yeah, you can just go ahead and just run it. Yeah. Uh, configuration yeah. is important and then limiting people's access. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Little things. Awesome. Excellent.